guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to show you our brand new raspberry beds. They were just finished. We did not build these beds. Aaron and I are not gifted in the realm of woodworking. I mean, we could build stuff, but it would never be level or plum or any of those things. It would lean slightly. So Eddie and Trisha came in and built these and they're the ones who have helped us with the greenhouse and the chicken coop and all of our little projects that we do around here. They do a beautiful job. So I wanted to show you the beds and tell you, kind of talk through what our design is and then uh, we are going to plant up this one so i've got heritage raspberries i was able to get a hold of them potted so you can see they're potted already instead of bare root um, typically i would probably go for bare root earlier in the spring but i didn't actually think we were going to get to this project so we got a hold of some potted ones i'm thankful for that um, we'll be able to get a little fruit uh, real quick this is where the raspberry beds are so you can see the cut flower garden right behind us um, 15 foot openings for all of our walkways, 15 feet right here between the planting area and our first raspberry bed, which if you've ever grown raspberries, they will come out at least, like they'll lean over this little um, trellising system right here, probably this much. Um, and then I'll have vine crops that'll probably encroach on the pathway a little bit. So it's a good thing that we went with 15 foot. We do plan on putting grass here. Um, actually, probably all the way around these beds. I think it'll be really beautiful to have grass, that green grass with the black uh, wood. We did decide to stain these so that it matched the fence that we have in the back of the cut flower garden back there. You can see that behind the little orchard. It's all coming together really beautifully. I'm so excited about it. So the way we did our trellising is a little bit different. Like when you Google raspberry trellising, you might see a system where you've got like a skinny section down here and then a bigger section up top, kind of like a fan shape. I actually don't like aesthetically like the look of that. I like it to look more like this and it could be because this is kind of what my parents look like and that's what I grew up with. So we mirrored our design pretty much after theirs using a little bit different materials. So like down here, we used four by sixes stacked two and they used railroad ties because that's what was there when they moved in. And I don't know if that was a thing, like in the seventies or something like that, people just used railroad ties around here. I mean, there was a bunch of them in our garden here. There's a bunch of them used all over in people's gardens around here. Um, and they don't look bad. And that's what my parents have always had there, but we thought four by sixes would be kind of a nice, like um, we needed it to be chunky enough out here to like hold up out here. Like four by fours just seemed a little bit small. So I really like this. We are gonna be putting some raised bed mix in this uh, bed right here, and then they can root in and go into the native soil. And as you know, if you've grown raspberries, they will start popping up eventually out here and we'll have to take care of that. But for our verticals here, we have four by fours, um, four by four right here. And then we have this wire cable. So just an, uh, I don't know what they call these, an ice screw or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, one of these and then the wire cable, just two levels of that right there. And then we had caps put on just to kind of make it look finished. I mean, and these are con con in concrete, so these are going nowhere. And I was trying to decide if I should do a second one down here. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I might have to run a wire cable though right here if some of the berry branches want to kind of come out here, but I thought if I put another four by four down here, it might look like too much or too heavy. I don't know, we'll just have to see. And eventually the raspberries, they get so big anyway, they'll kind of cover up this whole system. Do you remember how high these are? A little over four feet. How tall are you? Uh, f I'm five, four, <laughs> five, three, five, three and three quarters. <laughs> uh, so I think these were a little above four feet. Mm -hmm. I don't think we like had a precise measurement. I just came out here and said, oh, about right here is good. Um, so what the raspberries will do is we'll plant them right down the center of this row, which is three feet. And I think most guides recommend at least a two foot spacing to plant your raspberries. And we went with three feet and they'll grow up and then their canes will just kind of lay on this trellis trellising system. And it's just a really good idea to have a system in place like this for all bramble type crops like this that we're planting today. Um, so I am really very happy with this look out here. Also, in between our two roads, rows rather, we have eight feet um, so that we have a very comfortable walking area. When we moved into our house when I was little, there were four rows of raspberries out in their garden and they had to eventually get rid of two of the rows because they were put so close together. And as you know, 
a lot of varieties of raspberries and blackberries and things have thorns and you could hardly walk through uh, to pick berries because it was just so thick and so thorny. I remember crawling through as a kid, like we would find a tunnel underneath the, ar the arch, I guess the archway that the canes made. We would crawl through and we'd find like a big bunch of berries and then we could kind of like pop up and pick just right around where we were and then you'd have to go back down <laughs> and crawl under until you found another spot to pick. I don't want that to be our experience here. So I think the spacing is going to be very nice. We also ordered enough wood, enough four by sixes, so that we could create one more, th these are 30 feet by the way, 30 feet by three feet, one more 30 foot bed over there for strawberries. What are you doing Benjamin? Are you fixing that? Whoops. Here we go. Did you find a pile of steaks somewhere? No, I just find it in, in, in the trailer. In the trailer? Well, good job. Doing yeah. great. I Keep going, know. bud. All right, so I think all we need to do is we're gonna go grab some bags of raised bed mix and we're gonna fill up this area right here and then we'll start planting and I can go over some of those details when we get ready to do that. Don't these look amazing? Oh, the wind's kind of knocking them down. They're not planted yet, but it's still making me so excited to see some green out here. And I do know that they're going to be fruiting this first year, so that makes me excited as well. So we got the beds all filled, the drip run, Biotone starter fertilizer added to this area. And I just wanted to talk through each one of those steps and why we decided to use what we used. So you probably noticed I used that bagged Espoma raised garden mix. It's the same stuff we used in that elevated cocktail garden, elevated raised bed cocktail garden last year. And of course, the week after we planted that, I found out I was pregnant with Samantha. And so I couldn't make any of those delicious sounding cocktails that I had planned on, but that's not the case this year. So we should plant another cocktail garden this year. That'd be so fun. Anyway, um, so we used the bags and the reason why we did that uh, was because the raised bed in mix in bulk that I really like is over an hour away and I really couldn't justify get going and getting a load for just one bed. We're not planning on filling the next one until next year. Um, so we decided to go the bagged route. Um, now you could use a potting mix in a case like this if you wanted to, but it tends to be a more expensive option than like a raised bed uh, mix typically. But if you wanted to plant a single raspberry plant, like one of these pots, just one in a container, which you can absolutely do, you could scale this project to whatever size of area you have. Potting mix is a great option. So just use some of that and a little bit of the Biotone starter fertilizer and you would be good to go. I would not recommend using 100% compost in a bed like this. I think it would be too hot for the plants. I could mix some in this raised bed mix like some of the land and sea, but I don't feel like I need to. The raised bed mix already has a lot of good stuff in it. I was reading on the bag like earthworm castings and some other things. So I think the raised bed mix with our Biotone starter fertilizer is perfect. So in terms of drip, uh, you can see the brown half inch poly drip tubing. It has emitter holes every 18 inches, which is perfect because raspberries need to be spaced 18 to 24 inches apart. And of course I space mine about 18 inches. So the water coverage should be great. Now you 
you could get away with just one line of drip tubing in this, um, but then you would have to run your drip system a little bit longer for really good coverage. So we ran a kind of a really long rectangular shaped grid around the plants. That way we don't have to run our system quite as long for this zone, which when you have a ton of zones needing to be run, then that can be an issue. You don't want to have to run a specific zone for an extended amount of time. So the drip actually comes up right here. You can see that half inch black poly, that's our, uh, I don't know, water access tube. So it actually goes underneath this bed, underneath the soil, and it cruises across right here, and it taps into one of these zones. So we can control it from our phone, uh, we can adjust the amount of time we need to, but consistent water for raspberries is incredibly important. Like incredibly, I think most guides will tell you one to two inches of water per week, which depending on how much rain you get or that sort of thing, I mean, you need to adjust. And right out here, we're so dry and we're so windy. I mean, you can see this is just like typical breeze, everyday sort of breeze. We're supposed to get a storm tonight. It dries stuff out really quickly. So uh, we will probably be watering ours, I want to say, we'll probably in the heat of the summer, especially this year, we'll be probably giving them water every other day um, at the minimum. Uh, so it's just very important because if you don't give them enough water, they will not form very nice fruit. They'll be really hard, like shriveled up looking fruit instead of being nice, um, really kind of plump raspberries. I mean, it takes a lot of water to create that sort of fruit. So anyway, watering cons consistency is very important. Um, in terms of soil pH, I should have probably talked this about this earlier, but they like like 6.5 to 6.8, so like neutral to slightly acidic. We are very high pH here, um, so putting them in an elevated, elevated raised bed is a good idea for us just right from the gate, and then possibly adding in some soil acidifier. That may not be the case for you depending on where you live, but if you're planting them in the ground, it is a good idea to add in some organic matter um, and and things like that just to keep them really happy. So I think I mentioned earlier, this is called heritage. That's what all of these are in this row. It's an everbearing type red raspberry. Um, so we should have fruit on these pretty much all season long. So the difference between there's summer bearing and fall, fall bearing or everbearing, they're kind of referred to as the same thing. Um, summer bearing plants usually fruit for about a four week four to five week span and that's it. They get their fruit on last year's canes, so on canes that have overwintered. And your everbearing type, they will give you a small crop early in the season on the canes from last year and then they produce their big crop late summer, early fall. Um, but Heritage is the variety my parents have out at their house and we love them. They're a really great tasting berry. Uh, and then the fall golds we'll be putting in next year. So there are, I should mention, different types of summer bearing. So if you wanna have a uh, a lot of harvest time, like if you want to extend it, there are some that will ripen early, some that will ripen mid, and some that will ripen late. So if you keep that in mind and just kind of research the varieties you're putting in, you can make sure to have um, a raspberry crop for a good part of the season. So let's just get these planted and see how they look. these roughly 18 inches apart roughly I didn't measure anything but they fill in very very quickly in fact my parents have some fall gold raspberries out at their house and they're constantly like coming up in their walking area and I keep thinking I should just run out there and dig up some of their uh, like rogue raspberry plants they're usually encouraging us to do things like that then maybe I can start filling up this second bed because I'm actually the most excited about that variety of raspberry the sugar contents are really high in those and they're just so tasty I wanted to touch really quick on pruning because that seems to be kind of a mystery with raspberries, but it's pretty easy. For summer bearing type, um, you want to, at harvest, after you've harvested all your berries, you cut back the canes that have um, had fruit on them all the way at the base of those canes, but leave everything else because you need to leave some canes there in order to have some fruit the next year. For fall bearing or ever bearing type, uh, the best way to treat them to get the most productive crop in the fall is to actually mow or cut all the canes down um, in late winter, or early spring. And that way it encourages a huge harvest. If you want to have uh, that early harvest as well, you need to prune them like a summer crop. So you need to go in and cut back the canes that bore um, 
at harvest time and leave some canes there so that they're there to fruit the next spring. Um, and then they'll still bear, bear in the fall as well. I hope that makes sense. We'll probably do videos about it later on. Of course, I don't have any summer bearing types. I don't plan on having those types here. Um, so I'll probably never demonstrate that method. <laughs> anyway, I thought I would just touch on it because there's usually questions about that. So that's it for today's video. I am so excited to have these in the ground. Like I can't even tell you guys, this whole space makes me very excited. It's just so fun to be able to experiment with different things and, um, and grow just grow a lot of food. I know that both Aaron and Benjamin are gonna love this section right here. And especially once we get some strawberries going too. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye.